When we finished the last video, we had we had these blocks, that's a block, I swear, and we were firing bullets at them, and we managed to make a little red explosion here in the center of the box, which was a cube that would get bigger really quickly and then disappear. And today, we're going to look at how we can do that. What method can we use to make that explosion get bigger as time goes on? And so we're going back to interpolation. What we started with was uh, the information that we have to work with is the current time. So this is like a timeline right here. When the time is at T0, I'm sorry, T1, the explosion is going to be really small. And then as time goes by, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until at T2, the explosion is going to be much larger. And so we're going to take whatever the current time value is, it's somewhere between T1 and T2, and we're going to transfer it to a size value. Here the size value will be small, and here the size value will be large. So we'll start at T1, and when our time is at T1, we want our size to be S1. And then when our time is at T2, we want our size to be S2. So let's take a look at what, what information we know here. We know the distance between T1 and T2, that's going to be T2 minus T1. That'll come in handy later. And the, similarly, the distance between these two sizes is S2 minus S1. And we're actually going to do a little trick <clears throat> that'll make things slightly easier for us later on. We're going to have an intermediary step where we'll, we're going to transfer the values T1 to T2, we're going to transfer them to go from 0 to 1. And I'll show that on this yellow timeline. So we're going to kind of normalize them as we go. So let's first start out with getting T1 to T2 and transferring it to go from 0 to 1. I'm going to make a function for that, f of x. And it's really simple. We just take x and we subtract T1. Okay. That means when x is the same as t1, this will all turn out to be 0. And then we divide that whole thing by the distance from t2 to t1, uh, which is, uh, there you go, distance from t2 to t1. So where we've started out with something that goes from t1 to t2, I swear that's what that says, t1 to t2, we end with a value that is between 0 and 1. Now I'm going to make another function that's going to bring us from yellow to green. So it's going to start with 0 and 1. Let's choose a slightly brighter green. I'm going to start with 0 and 1, and we're going to transfer 0, 1 to something between S1 and S2. And that's just going to be the reverse process of this, and I'll make another function, g of x, that'll do that. So we start with x and we multiply it by the distance between s1 and s2. This should be a s2 minus x1. And then we tack on an s1. So finally our remap value, our remap function, which will give us the size of the explosion, remap function, is just gonna be a composition of these two functions. It's gonna be a composition, just like that. And that means that we take the value that we got out of f of x, we take our yellow value, and we throw it into g of x, which is our green value here. And so we'll just write that as, I'm just going to write g of x, but every time I see an x here, I'm going to replace it with f of x. So here's an x, I'm going to replace it with this, x minus t1 over t2 minus T1. Then I'm going to multiply that by S2 minus S1 and tack S1 on at the end. So actually now what we've got here is a general remap formula that can remap any range here, any T1 to T2, to any S1 to S, oh, that should be an S2 right there. <laughs> um, and we can use this for a bunch of things, not just finding the size of explosions. We can use it for a ton of different stuff. And I'm going to show you two of those things in the next part of the video. Let's go.
Here's our remap function. Let's fill it out. We're going to start by doing the f of x part. Uh, so we're going to make the yellow part. The yellow part is just going to be x minus t1. Let's put that in some parentheses. And then we're going to divide that by the distance between t1 and t2. And that's all we have to do for yellow. Um, now let's go to green. Here's the formula for that. That's just going to be the, the opposite. We're going to take yellow here. We're going to multiply it by the distance between S1 and S2. And then we're going to add on a little S1 there. And since we passed yellow in, we used yellow for our X, that means we're automatically doing the composition of functions that gives us the proper remapping. So let's return that green because that's our result. And now we'll go over to the part of the code where I render explosions. I call them puffs in the code because they look kind of look like little puffs, I guess. I don't know. But they're really explosions. Here is the line of code where I specify how big the size should be. And you can see it makes no sense. Time minus time created plus, I, I don't even, what? that. Let's simplify this. Let's just make it remap. And then we'll pass in our x value. Our x value is going to be the current game time, get time. And then what are, what are we interpolating from? What's our t1 and t2? Well, that's just the time created and the time that the explosion is over. And then what are we interpolating to? So let's give it the start size of, of the explosion and the end size of the explosion. And it goes off the screen a little bit, but you're not missing anything. Okay, so now we've made our size, but we're gonna go all the way here, and I'm gonna show you how you can use this remap function. It's really cool, it can be used for anything. We're going to specify the orange value of the explosion as well using this same remap function. Just as before, I'm just going to copy it from up here, we're also going to uh, use the time as, as an input to the function, but instead of specifying a size as an output, we're going to specify a color. So we're going to start with zero, meaning no orange, and then we're gonna like the maximum orange that we can that we can get is 255. 255 is the maximum color value usually when you're talking about game engines. So then I'll pass that orange right in here for the color. Let's crank this bad boy up. There we go. So here's my little player, and as I attack, you can see that I'm gonna come around here into the light. You can see that the the thing, get the little explosion, the puff, if you will, gets bigger, and it starts red, and as it gets bigger, it turns orange and then yellow, which, great, is exactly what we wanted. So, uh, join us next time where we're going to do more amazing game development, cool stuff, but I don't know what yet, but it'll be fun.